Hey friends, so I'm here today with Sarah Jane Crawford. Hi! So nice to have you along. Uh, we met Vegan Nights, yes, which is sweet, and you've got an app coming out, right? Yes, I've got an app called Viappy, which is launching in January, Viappi. and it's basically um, free to download, and then it's a restaurant finder, sweet. and the other side of it is going to be a recipe database, so if you want the recipes, nice. then you can always subscribe to that. So I'm going to make a recipe from an app today, so I'm going to make like a red lentil curry. Yes! Um, which sounds delicious, so I'm gonna make that. So I don't have to do it, basically. That's it, so you don't have to do it. You basically just said, look, right, I'm feeling lazy. <laughs> um, how did you come about, like, making the app? What, what was the kind of process in that? So it's been two and a half years that I've been vegan now, okay. and for me, it was just like, I've always had a bit of an entrepreneurial streak, and I've like, I can tell that. Can you? Yeah, I can tell that. <laughs> I've tried to start loads of businesses. Once I've tried to start a modeling agency. Um, what, what else? It was like a promotions company, me and my friend, like a club night, loads of things. Anyway, I'm always trying to like solve a problem. So when I turned vegan, I then became obsessed with vegetarian and vegan restaurants, yeah. which I'd never really kind of bothered about before. And, um, and then, you know, so I wanted to kind of put together a really beautiful looking restaurant finder because obviously there are really cool veggie restaurant finders yeah. out there already. But I wanted one that just looked really great and that was kind of like reminiscent of like a Deliveroo or Instagram friendly thing. And then I was like, okay, not everyone wants to go for dinner. What about recipes as well? And I could see that a lot of the recipe apps were doing really well. And I thought to myself, this would be really cool to have just a home where no matter whether you want to go out for dinner or you want to make it a home, there's, you know, a way to be to eat yeah, vegan. Yeah, that's cool. Because it's wanna... like, some people, are we thinking about it? And then they're yeah. just like, what about this recipe though? So exactly. Yeah, it's looks sweet. No, it's cool. But I also wanted recipes that were like, so some of the recipes are kind of a bit more fancy, like this, this one, I'm getting you to do it, because it's got a lot of ingredients and it's more fiddly. And then some of them are a lot more sort of, like student vegan, a bit more basic. Yeah. So you can make like Such a, a really good sandwich or a mac and cheese. And also like recipes for things that like, you would expect to be, filled with meat and dairy. So coming from somebody who's eaten, you know, meat and dairy for 30 odd years and then become vegan, I wanted stuff that was like to help people transition. So that's kind of the types of recipes in the app. That's cool, I like that. Yeah, man. And uh, I know that you guys have been on the train in London recently, but you're a billboard <laughs> up. Some yeah. vegan your action going on. Yeah, so on the London Underground now, um, because I'm one of the ambassadors for Veganuary, um, Tim Chief is also. See uh, my boy, my boy Tim, Tim your boy Chief. from the Midlands. He's also an ambassador as well. But I did a photo shoot down at Ashford um, Animal Sanctuary. Okay. And um, so there's a picture of me um, next to one of the cows. Um, it's a former dairy cow that they rescued, which is amazing. And basically, there's a campaign on the London Underground. But it's also going to be in Boston in the US, That's Sydney, cool. and Manchester. That's sick. It's sick, man. Yeah. So I'm really proud because. The whole thing with veganuary.com is that we're trying to get people to sign up to go vegan for January. So, you yeah. know, the more we can promote it, the better. So I'm we're just pumping like, out so pow. many veganuary recipes. In it? So, 100%. Are yeah. you? Wicked. I'm proper. I really want to support people with that. Yeah, because uh, I feel like. A lot of my friends are like going to do it and stuff like that. So, yeah. That's really good. I think that this veganuary is going to be. Veganuary 2018 is going to be the biggest. Veganery they've ever had. I know it sounds an obvious statement because veganism is obviously on the rise, but I feel like 2018 for veganism is going to be the biggest year ever that we've seen in this country sure. and in Western culture. So yeah, it's exciting times. Change is coming. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's beautiful. And then it's cool as well, like the whole shoot with the cow. It's like big dogs, right? Like so affectionate. Do you oh. know what I mean? It was actually, on a serious note though, it was quite a sad story with the dairy cow because um, this particular cow now can't bond with her young because she's so used to giving up her young. Oh. So, it, so it was a real eye-opener because I don't think a lot of people realise the impact that it has when, you know, cows are continually, sort of, continuously forced to become pregnant. We're taking their milk, we're taking their young, and then what you're seeing on a psychological level is the fact that now the cows can't even bond with their young because they just emotionally can't do it anymore. So, you know, when you've got, you know, some of the MPs say, voting on the Brexit thing, saying, oh, animals are not sentient beings, they don't have feelings. You're like, are you nuts? That made me so mad. It's horrible. And you, so when you go to an animal sanctuary, you see the proof and the evidence. So people need to just do their research. If they love animals, if you've got pets or you love animals, I just invite you to, like, go to an animal sanctuary, visit animals that have been rescued, speak to the people that love animals and that are running these sanctuaries like Ashford, and just... Um, 
really understand what goes on because I didn't even know that no. on a an animal psychology level that that was the case. I went to some schools recently and did um, some talks to kids about veganism, like yeah. doing some cooking demos and stuff. Yeah. Like the amount of kids when you speak to them, they just don't know why cows produce milk. Yeah. It's like the cows they just do, and you're like, yeah, you. No, why does your mother produce milk? And yeah. You're like, well, when they have a baby, and you're like, it's the same thing. I know. I have to admit, I just yeah. ignorantly kind of didn't really give it much thought myself, and then it was actually JME. Um, I love Jeremy. Big up man. Jeremy. I saw him the other night at um, Gigs had a big Christmas dinner and he was there and I was like, I've been meaning to talk to you for so long because since you came on my show and everything's changed for me and we just had a big hug and it was so nice and yeah, so it was good to kind of reconnect with him. But he was the one that was, you know, first talking to me about the whole thing with cows and yeah, it was just a real eye opener for me. And then once you know the truth, it's very difficult to like look the other way. That's it. But it's not, it's, not, it's not all about preaching about you know like animal welfare it's also celebrating the fact that the food that we're eating now is so much better than the food I've ever eaten before yeah do you agree it's tasty you don't feel as bad after yeah it's just not yeah it's, it's just it's a completely different game 100% um, but the biggest problem um, is options so like you bringing out an app that's got more options and things like that it's exactly what people need so you know people need to know that they're not going to go hungry if they go vegan you know they're going to eat just as well, if not better, as they've ever eaten before. They're just gonna eat compassionately and live a yeah. different lifestyle. And the mental positivity that comes with that far outweighs anything that was like easy before. So it's, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, that's really cool. So like, what else are you working on at the minute? You got a few other things in the pipeline, so. Yeah, so I shot, um, so I co-hosted um, World's Strongest Man Again, Channel 5. Sweet. So that airs Christmas into New Year 2018. Nice. That was fun. We were in Botswana again. Um, so I've been there for the last two series and the last two years. Co-host that with James Richardson. Big up James Richardson. If you don't know him, he's like the football presenter. So he's like the one that did, you know, like back in the days in the 90s with all the Italian football yeah. channel four, he was like the kind of voice and the, the presenter behind that. And he's really cool and does loads of football stuff now. Um, so yeah, we did that, and uh, this year, it's a really exciting winner. So people should watch it. And it's funny, because when I talk about World's Strongest Man, sometimes when people don't know I do it, they're like, you're doing World's Strongest Man? I'm like, yeah, man. I'm like, pulling those trucks. No, okay. <laughs> but what's really cool about it is the fact that it's one of those shows that like, it's a bit of a legendary show that everyone yeah. in Christmas has seen. Male or female, young or old, your nan. You know, if you were young, yeah. I think most people have seen the likes of whoever, Jeff Capes back in the days. Yeah man, just chill out and like, be a bit like, what? Like these people are just yeah. insane. Yeah, yeah man, and they're such cool guys. They're really cool guys and um, they look, they're obviously built like, you know, but like they're the actually that really, pull right? Yeah, exactly, but they're actually really sweet and um, it's really good fun to work on it. So hopefully next year I'll work on it again. Yeah, that's then, cool. Yeah, and then I shot another thing for Channel 4, which is airing at the end of January, which I can't speak about right now, but it's, it's like a charity. It's something for charity, and it's also linked to the vegan thing as well. For me, anyway, for my part of the story is the veganism. It's not a vegan show. Yeah, oh, the whole show, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what's beautiful. You're in the, you're in the public eye, and you're bringing that vegan element into it. So yeah. People are watching shows, they go, no, she's vegan. And a lot of people don't even know what vegan means. Yeah. So some people are watching it and going, she's vegan, what's, what's that mean then? Like, what, what can she eat, what can't she eat, what does she do? Yeah. And someone like you can bring the lifestyle element into it as well as the diets. That's Yeah, that's no, it's really been good. nice to shoot. I'm always shoehorning it in wherever I can. That's <laughs> what it's about. Any opportunity. I'm Starting like, that conversation. Vegan. You were at Vivolution this year as well, right? Yeah, How I did that? a tour. How did that go down? So Vivolution, for those who don't know, is like one of the biggest, um, vegan festivals I think in Europe and it's maybe the second or third year and I did a talk which was the first time I've done like a talk to a lecture theatre in that vein talking about veganism so I was really nervous but I was really happy with how it went and basically my talk was about uh, my journey well the title was KF from KFC to Veganuary. Sick, I saw that, sick I like it, yeah sick title. <laughs> I do say so myself. So that was really cool but obviously so for those who don't know, the demographic and the, the, the people that v, um, Vvolution typically attract are fellow vegans, so it's a little bit of a kind of industry event, although it's open to everyone, which means that when you're doing a talk, you're not there to kind of necessarily get people to become vegan because they're already vegan. So my message was, how can we be better 
uh, equipped at becoming more effective communicators. When we go out to our wider community and our family and friends, how can we be better communicators and, and become more effective in getting other people to try veganism without ramming it down their throat and being like, you're a like, murderer and you know, when I used to wear a fur coat back in the day, so I have to yeah, be, you can't be hypocrite, empathetic. Right? Yeah, and I have to understand that. Just like in the way that JME approached me and came on my show and brought in like vegan kebabs and barbecue Pringles and Oreos and all those like surprisingly vegan things and, yeah. and then got a bit deeper into it. He approached it in such a way where he left me really inspired, you know, like sent me over the Gary Roski link to the greatest speech ever. And all of these things, rather than kind of trying to preach to me, he just kind of told me what he had learned. And so that was what I was sharing with everyone in the talk. I like that. It's good. Yeah. And Jeremy's an inspirational guy, man. I've he only is. met him once and he was like, yeah, he was, he was so blessed to me. He he's really, so really interesting, nice he's really quirky, and every time I meet him, I always like find him so fascinating. He's just such a great guy. And what I thought was so cool about him was that he didn't strike me as your stereotypical vegan, because I just had this idea before becoming vegan that it was like this kind of white middle class thing. To be honest, I did feel like that. And so when I met him, yeah, I, I felt like, you know, he was a guy maybe from a similar background to me, and so I just thought, you know, this is so interesting. And I feel like to my one extra audience at the time as well, it really resonated with a lot of people that he was talking yeah. to. Yeah, that's cool. That's it's really kids. We're going to leave this for like 15 minutes. So tell minutes. me what you've done so far, because you've just gone... <laughs> Literally, yeah. I mean, it was a quick one to put together, which is really nice. Um, it's nice that the app's got them kind of simple meals that people can put together, but literally chopped onion, some carrot, um, I'm not going to tell you the proportion, you're going to have to check the app for these. But yeah, some Chucking onions and carrot, proportions. Um, some red pepper, yeah. yeah, some diced red pepper. I've added in garlic puree, ginger puree, um, korma paste, which I love mm, korma paste, that nice coconut. Love a bit of korma paste. Taste, which is nice. Um, yeah, some ginger. And then I've added in some chopped tomatoes yeah. and the red lentils. And then I've added in some vegetable stock. So that's still going to soak up into them lentils. It's gonna take about 15 minutes for them to soften. Yes. I'm gonna cook you some rice while that's happening. Oh my God, and this we'll is like my favorite up. kind of thing. This was actually, I need people to know as well, there's a chef called Annabelle Carmel. She's a celebrity chef. She's a really amazing woman with an amazing story. And she, her and I collaborated on these recipes. That's cool, yeah. Because she just really knows what she's doing and she wanted to kind of like get involved in the vegan world. Yeah. And I was like, what I really wanna do is I want like a really filling curry. I want this and I want that. And then she put the recipes together. So for the first 40, recipes well there's going to be more than that when you download the app but um the vast majority of the first recipes for launch are going to be by annabelle carmel that's so sick. that's one of these ones so she's going to love that you put it together sweet wicked so <laughs> our lentil curry is all ready it's nice and here we've got some rice over here so i'm just going to dish it up oh my god so uh yeah i'm guessing some of the like is your friend who's making the app with you who's done like some of the rest business stuff have you tasted some already? Like, what's so, the so, Anna, like? so Annabelle, she's got her own thing going on. So she's okay. a chef. So she didn't d develop the app or anything. She's okay. just basically collaborated with me on cool. some of the recipes to launch. And then I've got a development Because you didn't team. know me then, yeah? Because I didn't know, oh, I've got some recipes for me, <laughs> sick. Um, so, so basically I've got a development team. Okay. Because um, I'm not a coder. But um, yeah, it's all coming together quite well, really. It's, it's really cool because it's, it's, it's a new thing for me, being in the tech space. Yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah, it's wicked. So it's really interesting, and I've learned so much about like getting apps approved by Apple, and you know, like usability, and just, you really, it's such a steep learning curve, but it's really rewarding. Yeah, that's so, nice. It's yeah. nice that you're just putting it out there, though. Do you know what I mean? Like getting into something that you've not really, you know, dipped your feet into before. Yeah. And just kind of, yeah, just get, getting involved with. Well, I just want it to New exist without ways. me, you know, like whether, you know, in the future someone else took it over or like, I just want something that exists without me. So there's a legacy and something that's useful that you're making a contribution, you know. So that was important to me when I was thinking about it. Thought it's good. Right. What's your favourite thing to eat normally? My thing, favourite thing to eat? At the moment, I'm absolutely addicted. I've got a recipe called Xavier Stroni. Um, that I'm absolutely addicted to. I just I actually eat Zevistroni. it. Zevistroni? yes. It's like a minestrone dish. But I went on a tour of Italy. And uh, of course when you I was did. in a little tour, when I was in a little town called Zevio, um, I was just really inspired to like cook. 
and as I always am to be fair. You know, that, that's quite fancy and, um, you went to Italy business. Yeah, and so while I was there and I was in this little town, I just kind of picked loads of local ingredients like um, like local basil and tomatoes and things like that, like all like organic stuff. And um, yeah, I just kind of decided I was going to name it after the, the place where I made it. So I made it Zevia Strone. That's sick, um, you know, tell the truth. It's basically like just pasta, beans, uh, loads of basil. Um, it's got pesto in it. Um, yeah, it's just like a real tasty, hearty recipe. Carrots, um, celery, all the good stuff. It's like, the reason I like it so much as well is because when I worked out the macros, it was like technically the perfect dish, it's like 50 What do you mean the macros? Like, you know, like your carbs, protein, etc. Oh, et right, okay. So it's like 50% carbs, 30% uh, protein, 20% fat. So it's kind of perfect for perfect. your intakes, which is good. What about your, what's your like, favorite? Well, there's a, a lentil bolognese recipe in my app that nice. I love. And I'm like, the, I'm, we was just saying this earlier, weren't we? That when it comes to recipes, I become obsessed with like one recipe mm -hmm. and then I'll just make it like 80 times and then I'm like sharing it, do you want some like, lentil bolognese? And then there was this chocolate tiffin cake that I've got on the app and that I had as a Halloween thing when I was kind of, you know, just getting people to sort of like bear with me while the app was being developed. So I was like putting some recipes out on viappy.co.uk and the tiffin cake I kept making it over and over again. I literally, everyone's, anyone, anywhere near me has tried it. So um, yeah, but what else do I like? I just love just good mango food, really. Yeah. So Are we ready for it? A little yes. bit of mango chutney. I feel like that. I need to. I'm just As take I a know. picture of it. Yeah, yeah, get involved. Get a picture. Love mango chutney, man. How nice is it? That is wicked. We have become like a sort of a culture of people, though, that take pictures of things before we experience them. So we have like this moment yeah. of like, we're not doing this, we're just photographing it for others to share in it before we even do it or eat it. Or Am I allowed to take a picture of it now? Yeah, you can take a picture of it now. Cheers. It always looked that good. <laughs> Actually, you take the picture, go on. I'll take it. You know what you're doing. Have you ever worked in a restaurant? Uh, I have, but as a waiter. Oh, did you used I, to look at the food like, and think, man, that's, I could do better? The problem is I can't take it from this side. <laughs> Come on then. It needs to be with the lighters. Oh God, that looks so good, I can't even take it. Sick. Yeah, I'm impressed. Cool that? Yeah. Sweet, dig in. Let's do it. <laughs> Oh my god, so good. If you do say so yourself with your own recipe. Yeah. <laughs> this is a real collaboration between me and you, isn't it? Exactly. Perfect. So um, you're going to be seeing more of both of us together because she's said we're going to make our own TV programme. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say it on here so that I've got witnesses. What are we going to call it? Um, hmm. The Sarah and Brett show? Yeah, I think I'll kill Sarah it. Sarah Jane and Brett. I think I'll kill it, yeah. Because Brett and Sarah Jane hasn't has not got the same ring to it, is it? Sarah I don't know. and Brett. We'll talk about it. <laughs> oh my god, I'm really impressed. Thank you so much for making yeah. this. Sweet. So, look out for everything that's coming. The app. Say again, Viappi. Don't worry, Viappi. Can you tell I've got a marketing degree? I know, you smashed but also, it. Also, I'm gonna, <laughs> when we post this video, I'm gonna um, put the, the recipe out there as well. So Beautiful. this will be like a free recipe for everyone to yeah. get an idea of what's on the you app. Know, you know you want some of this. Right, yeah. 100%. Um, it's just Sarah Jane Crawford on Instagram, right? Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So look out for her face in the tube stations next to a cow, yeah. Um, face of Veganuary, beautiful. My boy Tim Sheaf, which is really, really nice. Um, yeah, check out that Viappi app. And until next time, friends, be nice to each other and goodbye. <laughs>